Chapter 9 dealt with transformational geometry. Okay, pretty straightforward stuff. We'll take a few notes along the way. Otherwise, we'll just get going with this section right off the bat here. Okay, problem 1 says, which expression describes the translation of a point from negative 3, 4 to 4, negative 1? Okay, translations was the first type of transformation we looked at. And that's just a shift left, right, up, down. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to describe how to go from this negative 3, 4 to the 4, negative 1. Now, there's no grid on this problem. I suppose what we could do is draw that out and count things out, but we can come up with a rule algebraically as well. Our translation rules always had the form. We said that x, y went to x plus something, and then y plus something. And for a translation between these two points, we want to figure out what that something is. Okay, so if I start off with negative 3, 4, okay, that's going to map to negative 3 plus something, and 4 plus something. And we need to figure out the something that turns this into 4, negative 1. Okay, well, to get from negative 3 to 4, well, that would be negative 3 plus 7. Okay, because negative 3 plus 7 gives me 4. To get from 4 to negative 1, we take 4 and subtract 5. Okay, so as far as my translation rule goes, I could say we have x plus 7 and y minus 5, or y plus negative 5. And kind of the physical effect that's going to have on the graph as far as the left, right, up, down part, okay, adding to the x is going to move us to the right. Subtracting from the y will move us down. So we'd say that's going to be 7 units right and 5 units down. Option D here. Okay, actual final won't be the exact same way, but it's going to utilize kind of these ideas, how we can go from points okay, to an algebraic expression Okay, to the physical movements on the graph as far as left, right, up, down. Okay, problem two. It says trapezoid ABCD is reflected over the y-axis. We want to figure out what are the coordinates of the image of point C. Okay, our second type of transformation we talked about was a reflection. And with a reflection, what we're going to do is just take a point and flip it across a line of reflection. Okay, we're not actually going to do the whole shape here. All we're worried about is point C, which looks like it has coordinates 5, 1. We have our line of reflection, which is the y-axis. So I'm going to highlight that for us here. And the way our reflections worked is we figured out how far our point was from the y-axis, or from the line of reflection. Looks like in this case it's just 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 units away. So in the opposite direction, we'll just move that same distance. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And here's our C prime at, looks like, negative 5, 1. Okay, so B is the answer there. Okay, we can do that with the graph. Or if we think about this kind of algebraically, what's going to happen flipping across the y-axis, okay, y-coordinates will stay the same x coordinates in this case just become negative. So really if you tell me the coordinates of C, I don't need a graph. We can just kind of flip it by manipulating the numbers. In problem three, we have if triangle ABC is rotated 90 degrees counterclockwise around the origin, we want to know what are the coordinates of A prime. Okay, so A after that image. All right, so I have point A here. It looks like at five, and as far as rotations go, we had some different formulas. Now, 90 degrees was the important one because we can come up with all our other rotations by multiples of 90, okay, just with that rule. For a 90 degree rotation, we said that x, y, okay, mapped to negative y, x. Okay, so as in if I have the coordinates. 5, 4, okay, that's going to change to negative 4, 
Okay, so we're gonna move the y coordinate first and make a negative, comma, five. Okay, before we circle that, it might be a good idea to actually plot that point, see if that makes sense. So if I go over negative four, up to five, here our a prime, here'd be our a prime. Okay, and then it appears that if I looked at the line between those two points, they're equal distance. Looks like things happen at a right angle there. Okay, so that indeed would be a rotation of 90 degrees okay, counterclockwise, the way we did our rotations about the origin. Okay, so answer would be A here, negative 4, 5. Again, I'd recommend plot things out just to see if you're doing them correctly. In problem four, we have Billy is reducing the triangle by a scale factor of one half. What are the coordinates of the image of A again? Okay, reductions, enlargements, those are both types of dilations, okay, where we either blow things up or shrink them down. Here, I have point A at one, four. Okay, the way our dilations worked, if I have a point at x comma y, and I know my scale factor, which in this case is one half, that's going to map to just that scale factor, one half times the x, and also same thing, scale factor one half times the y. Again, they'll be different based on whichever scale factor we give you, but for this problem we're talking one halves. Okay, meaning that our point at 1, 4 is going to map to 1 half times 1, okay, and 1 half times 4, which is equal to just the coordinate 1 half 2. Okay, so if I go over 1 half, up 2, there's our A prime. Okay, it should be in line with the original A. Looks like it's about half the distance away. Okay, and if I finish that triangle off with the B prime and C prime, okay, we kind of check and make sure we're doing things right. Same triangle, just half the size. Okay, so answer for this one will be A at one half two. Okay, and the last thing we looked at in our transformation chapter was compositions of transformations. Okay, we had our glide reflection where we translated and then reflected, or combinations of different numbers of reflections. Okay, here we want to know which transformation maps the black figure onto the blue figure, and it looks like these are all compositions. We're going to need more than one to happen. Okay, now it looks like they all involve a reflection. So I'm going to take a look at that first. Let's look at what happens when we reflect things over the x-axis. Okay, if I take this image and reflect the whole thing over the x, it looks like we're going to end up with something like this. So now with very straight lines, but there would be our image after the single reflection. And then notice, I can't just shift this to make it sit on top of a blue figure. If I did that, if I shifted it by the 4, so 1, 2, 3, 4, or the 6, they wouldn't be facing the same direction. So actually what I need to do with, at this point is reflect it a second time over the y-axis, and that's what's going to make things sit on top of each other. Okay, so here's an example where we have a double reflection over the y, then the x, or the x, then y. Okay, order isn't going to matter for this problem. And that'll make that black figure sit on top of the blue one here.